Lab number three is going to be identifying sedimentary rocks. And as usual, I will be providing a little handout that uh, summarizes everything that we went over in lecture, like the origin of sedimentary rocks and the different types that exist and uh, some of the different ways we classify them and ways we look at their texture and so on. Uh, but the important part that you guys probably care about is how are we going to classify the different ones that you see in your lab? Well, the first way you classify sedimentary rocks, the first thing you have to look at is you have to ask yourself, are they clastic, are they chemical, or are they organic? Now, I will let you know we're not going to look at any organic sedimentary rocks in this class, at least not in this lab. Those are all different types of coal, and I'm not going to show you guys any of the different types of coal. So in this lab, you are going to have to figure out, are you looking at a clastic sediment or a chemical sedimentary rock? Well, clastic sediments are made out of little bits and pieces of rock glued together. And I hope you can see that in this particular rock. Look at all those little bits and pieces there that are stuck together. That would be clastic, right? Now a chemical sedimentary rock is a little more like this one. This one's not made of bits and pieces. This is made of crystals growing together. So this one is a chemical sedimentary rock. So the first thing you'll ask yourself is, is my rock clastic or chemical? If it is clastic, the next thing you look at is the size of the uh, pieces inside. Are they bigger than two millimeters? Are they 1 16th to two millimeters? Or are they so small that they are, um, uh, you can't actually see the individual ones without a microscope? And then after that, you'll uh, narrow it down even more. If it's chemical, well, the next thing you look at in chemical sediments is the composition. It's the rock made out of calcite, which reacts to acid, dolomite, which reacts when powdered, halite, which tastes salty, gypsum, which is very soft, or quartz that can scratch glass. Well, let's do um, an example of this. So let's go back to this particular specimen. Already I told you that this is clastic, made of little bits and pieces stuck together. And hopefully you can see lots of those little bits and pieces. Now while a few of them are bigger than two millimeters, most of them are less than two millimeters. So what this would do is this takes us into this part here. They're sand sized pieces. Now, now that we know they're sand sized pieces, we need to decide are they mostly quartz? Are they, uh, is there a large amount of feldspar in there? Are there a lot of rock fragments? Or is it kind of a whole bunch of little sand grains surrounded by clay? Well, some of this can be hard to figure out because you might be thinking, I can barely identify quartz and feldspar when I have a big fist sized sample. How can I do that when I have a little sand grain? Well, in sedimentary rocks, sand grains that are made out of quartz look colorless. Sand grains that are made out of feldspar look pink or milky white. If you have a, a, a rock, lots of rock fragments, you're going to have lots of different colors in there. And then gray wackies, well, gray wackies, which are the sand grains surrounded by clay, they usually have a little bit of a greenish, kind of a greenish gray tint to them. So if I put this rock back up here and we take a look at it, you notice all these little pink pieces in there. I said pink, think feldspar. So this particular rock, I would have said it's clastic, it has sand sized pieces, it has a lot of feldspar in it, it is an arcos. This rock here is also a sandstone. It's probably hard to see through the camera, but it's made of little sand grains. See, I just knocked a bunch of them off. And if I look really close at them, they're colorless. So this one would be a quartz sandstone. Now, what about those finer grained clastic sedimentary rocks? That looks a lot like this. I can't see the individual little grains in there. And so this is gonna be one of those siltstone, mudstones, or shales. 
Well, a shale is going to split in nice, flat, thin pieces. So this is not a shale. So the next thing I would end up doing is I'd take a little nibble of this and I'd see if the pieces felt gritty or smooth. And that would tell me if I'm dealing with silt or I'm dealing with clay. Obviously, you guys are dealing with photographs, so you don't actually have to eat any of my rocks. Now, what would I do if I had chemical sedimentary rocks? How do I de identify those? Well, after I decide that I have a chemical sedimentary rock, I have to figure out its composition. So, for example, I already showed you this one. I said it's little crystals growing together. And um, my next thing would be, I need to figure out what is that rock made out of. And lots of chemical sedimentary rocks are made from calcite. So I might take some acid and put it on there and absolutely nothing happens. So that tells me this rock is not made from calcite, so it cannot be any of the limestones. It also will not react to acid when it's powdered, so it's not a dolomite either. If I lick it, it doesn't taste salty, so it's not halite. But if I scratch it with my fingernail, I can scratch that. And that tells me this is gypsum. Now this one, this sedimentary rock, is very fine-grained. I can't see any, uh, any of the different crystals in there. But one thing that happens when I put acid on it, it really starts to bubble up like that. So that tells me it's made from calcite. So what I would then do is I'd say, all right, it's a chemical sedimentary rock. It's made from calcite. Let me read some of these different descriptions of it. And um, it has very fine grain. So let's see. Fine grained ones are going to be micrite or chalk, right? Grain's not visible. And micrite is usually pale yellow to pale gray. Chalk is usually white, can write on slate. Um, this is kind of a pale yellow to a pale gray. We can't write on things with it, so that would be micrite. So that's how you uh, use these charts to identify your sedimentary rocks. As always, let me know if you have any questions about the lab.